Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's me coming at you again with another vid. Now, um, the WBC president, Mauricio Suleiman, had came out and uh, he made a statement, a brief statement, in an article um, on Boxer Scene. Shout out to them, by the way, once again. Um, that uh, that he and his um, committee members of the WBC will uh, are currently still investigating the Povetkin situation, um, doping situation, I should say, and they will... Um, come to a uh, final ruling on within the next few days so uh next few days from now today is tuesday so that could be up to friday who knows it could be tomorrow hell or it probably could be later today who knows but expect an announcement to come in within the next few days on this matter and um what's um what's so uh unique about the situation i have to say was kind of a a little bit of a interesting um, what's interesting about it is that uh, Rabonski a few days ago before he came out and said that Povetkin had tested clean uh, for a what six tests which was a uh, what yesterday and saying that his clients could been exonerated well obviously the WBC kind of dismissed that notion <laughs> because Mauricio Suleiman is quoted in the article by saying look you know, Pavekin's team is saying one thing and while this team is saying another thing, the bottom line is this, is that we're going to come up with a ruling within the next few days. We're still investigating the ma matter and we're still cooperating with uh, with WADA uh, slash VADA to, um, you know, determine our to determine the proper findings and then we'll make our decision from there. OK, but the thing about Robonsky is that he a few days ago, as I mentioned, has also was quoted in an interview with Boxing Scene saying that this investigation can take several months. And I don't think he was referring to the WBA. Shout out to Hatman, by the way, because he brought this up in his latest video. Uh, I would have to tend to agree to because I think he was referring to WADA. And he also referred to uh, uh, a Russian swimmer by the name of Yulia uh, um, uh, uh, Efimova. Okay. Now, she was also brought, in, brought into the discussion, too, as well in, a, in a, um, chat forums about this whole dialogue and debate about the Pavekin saga. Um, one of the comment, one of the uh, uploaders um, has said that, look, Pavekin's case, and so did Rabatsky, has said his case is very, very similar to uh, Efimova, where in a situation where, you know, um, Eldomian can pop up and pop out whenever, you know, you know, whenever you want to through, through drug tests. Okay, so one of the commenters who's actually defending Pivekin in this matter sent me the link to the FMO, you know, Ifamova case. So I took a look at it, and it turns out she actually failed multiple drug tests this year for Meldonia. But on one of the tests, she popped up negative. Okay, now I've said this once and I say this again. On many occasions, I said that there is always a possibility, the po likelihood of you having a false negative can happen all right that's very understandable based off um you know medical research and scientific research whatnot but that still not does not address that Pivekin had three negatives three prior negative tests uh for madonia or any other buffs banned substance whatsoever he had three negatives prior prior before he got caught on the fourth one that that still that you know even mobile situation does not explain this right here. So I've asked this commenter along with anyone else that if anybody can prove to me where can Madonia just be under can go undetected on three um, negative drug tests or more, please let me know. And not one person is able to come up with that um, uh, come up with that uh, evidence. Not one. Okay, again, it can't happen on one false negative test. I get that it can't happen, but on three negative tests that Meldonian can go undetected nah that's very difficult for me to buy all right and the fact that he failed the four test he failed the b sample and now you know a month later he comes up <laughs> negative on this one so you know um it's a very very complex situation if you look at it but the three those three false negatives is still hard for me to get over i don't know i know i keep bringing it up but it's still hard for me to get over that, and no one's yet to come out and provide an explanation on that. Not even Bunsky himself has came out to explain that. So the WBC are, you know, I have to get credit when credit is due. They are doing their job accordingly. They are in co cooperation with WADA, along with WADA, to figure out and get in the bottom of this and see what's going on. 
But I want to co comment on the um, Ifamova situ you know, you know, situation. Now, based off my further, further research, uh, many people are just, are you know, who are defending Pivekin here and saying, look, uh, Ifamova was actually cleared due to the, you know, the, um, due to the, um, you know, unconfirmed scientific research on whether, how long Modelmia can stay within the system. Okay, fine. So be it. But even though she was um, cleared, well, she hasn't, well, even though she was, um, she actually received a provisional uh, ban from taking the substance while she's under investigation. Now, even though the ban was lifted, she's still being investigated. So she's still, still, they're still trying to figure out, you know, how did she actually take it this year? How long did she have in her system, et cetera, et cetera. So she's not out of the woods yet. And this really, really pissed off the, you know, the swimming community because uh, Aoife Mova, this is not the first doping case that she's had. She actually tested positive for steroids a few years ago, uh, three years ago, and she received a 16-month ban for that. So she, to most people, is now, to most, um, you, know, you know, in the public eye, is perceived a drug cheat due to that alone. And then this whole Mendelia situation coming up, yes, again, this is a, a murky situation, but given the fact that she's allowed to compete while she's being investigated for a banned substance that she's felt multiple times on this year does send a bad signal. And the reason why I say that is because there's other Russian athletes right now that are sitting at home and they are sitting, you know, they're, they're, they're sitting at home and they're at, they have to serve out their provisional bans or bans, whatnot, because they're still being investigated. So they're not allowed to compete until, um, their the investigation on their, um, you know, on them consuming the drug at a certain time is completed. So they can argue and say, well, well, how come me from over is getting the, um, a fair treatment of, of, of being, of being allowed to compete while I can't compete? Well, to be honest with you, it, Ifamova has strong, strong sponsors. She has powerful sponsors and backers. So they were able to probably help um, get her out of that situation. So if you don't have a strong sponsors and backers, like Hatman said, then you're pretty much shit out of luck. And this and Pavekin has Robosky. And Robosky's a very, very powerful individual. Okay. Now, to me, the bottom line is this, y'all. Based off the what the WBC, um, what Mauricio Suleiman has said, in the next few days they're going to come to a final ruling. It appears to me that based off this argument debate about Meldonia and the, whether it, ex, you know, how long it stays in your system, whether it can reappear or disappear at a certain time, whatnot during truck tests, um, it could more likely lean to where the where WADA is going to uh, recommend that Vekins. Um, Vivekin can be provisionally cleared. When I mean by provision, provisionally cleared, he will be allowed to compete, but he will still be under investigation. Okay, so if he's allowed to compete while he's under investigation for, you know, for a banned substance, then that will also send a bad, bad signal to the world of boxing. And here's the reason why I say that is because Lucas Brown recently received a ban for testing positive for computerol. OK, now Brown and many have has stated that he was spiked and I believe he was spiked based off those circumstances because he tested negative a few at least three days before the fight. And also he tested positive after the fight. Now, based off you know, the history of computer all, um, it can be used for contamination. It's been proven on many cases. And so I think it was a Latin soccer team, I believe, you know, a football team in most European countries would deem it. Um, they were. Um, the whole team tested positive for computer raw. Now, based off the, their findings and you know, based off the investigation they had to undergo, it was ruled that based off the fact that they actually consumed the drug because their foods and their drinks were contaminated. So that team was um, was uh, cleared from, you know, from, you know, from the investigation. So Lucas Brown could argue that, look, if Vivekin is cleared to fight while he's being investigating for a banned substance and I should be able to compete while they, you know, while the WBA should be able to give me that fair treatment. I know this, they're going to say, well, this is a different jurisdiction because Brown competed under the WBA's jurisdiction while the Vecan could potentially compete under the WBC's jurisdiction. So he could argue that. While the other Russian athletes can argue that as well, say, you know what, then if these guys like Ifomo, you know, Ifomova and Pavekin are allowed to compete while they're being investigated for Madonian, then why should, why are we sitting at home? And again, Brown can argue the same case. 
Well, all I got to say is this. The WBC, I just hope they come to a fair ruling here and they just just don't make the same mistake that you did with the Francisco Vargas situation because that made them look so bad. Made them look so bad that the fact that Vargas actually tested positive from computer raw, but he wasn't asked to submit a B sample. So the W, from my understanding, the WBC interfered uh, with uh, Vargas' attempts to collect the B sample, and they uh, hired a uh, California State Athletic Commission to conduct a test, uh, an additional test, and he was cleared from the. And he was cleared, and he was allowed to fight. Um, he's allowed to fight. So, yeah, that I just. I don't know, man. It's a very, very strange situation. But again, to me, based off what I've seen and based off on Hatman's video and, and when I looked at this a little bit further today, I have to conclude. And I believe that Vivekin may be able to compete on provisional uh, um, basis, meaning that we'll allow you to compete, but you're not going to be off the hook. You're still going to be under investigation. And again, it also kind of... Sets a uh, a stand a, a bad a bad um, perception on Russian athletes, okay? Because Tony at Bell, you just recently um, in his post fight um, his post fight rant after he knocked out um, Magabu, he said, "Look, I'll take on Denis Ledesev, but I'm not going to fight him in Russia. He gonna have to come to my backyard and fight me." And this is only in um, you know paraphrasing what Bell you said, but. You know, based off the Spivecki situation, man, it's just like a lot of athletes are going to be afraid. They're not. They're going to refuse to fight in that in that um, in that territory. However, if Wilder is asked to defend his title, like I said, he should be able to uh, have it on his terms where he can defend it in his backyard in the United States, or in other words, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Well, let me know what you guys think. Care to comment, share, subscribe, sign up.